Uh, do you want to just make some comments or what we're going to see? Welcome. Uh, and then uh, I'll just introduce George. So go ahead. No, I think we're in good shape. Uh, we'll um, try to remember to have a break here in just a little bit. Uh, the restrooms, if you have not been here before, are down the hall um, and then to, the, um, to the left. So the Fair Center is very accommodating, nonetheless, and uh, I want to voice our appreciation for them, first and foremost, as Jeff might be putting out the refreshment. I'll put out a few more tables back there. I think there's some room, and so we're not uh, uh, too crowded in case some folks will uh, keep coming in. I suspect they will. But I think we can be comfortable. I think if, uh, if it doesn't cool down very quickly, we'll start opening the doors. <laughs> yeah. Not if it gets any warm, we'll close them and put the air conditioner on. <laughs> but, uh, I think we're in good shape. If you, uh, if you have the bubble sheets, I have more of those if we run out. And um, I don't recall, do you have CCA credits at the other meeting? So this is the fourth meeting that uh, the Corn and Soybean uh, Group has done. And we did this a couple of years and it's very well received, so we thought we'd host it again this year. And so it works out extremely well. They pick up the uh, tab for the room and, and for lunches and keep things uh, very easy for all of us. So we really appreciate that. So other than that, George, nothing else uh, comes to mind? Sorry, George. Uh, okay, Martin. Uh, but you know, these type of meetings uh, are easy to come to and say, and by the way, uh, the question was asked of me, did I see several that come to another meeting, and the question was asked of me at the agenda, this is different, I'm sure, than any meeting you've gone to, because the one meeting we had was down at Cabela's, and I don't know if anybody went to Cabela's. If you did, it's a reiteration of that, and we did have a meeting in Frankie Group that was somewhat similar to this one, but this one's going to be different than most likely that you set in on. What I want to do, though, is thank Martin, because it's easy to come to these meetings, not particularly easy to pay the bill, but uh, someone has to organize, someone has to get the invitation, someone has to take their reservation, someone has to get the meal, and that comes through Martin and his office, so we appreciate that. To begin this morning, uh, we're going to have Dr. George Bird. Many of you uh, have seen George before. We worked with George, gosh, I'm going to be wrong here, George, but since the early to mid 90s, uh, with system of code for soybeans has been a problem. And I'm not going to be solid it yet, George, but uh, you try it. And you give us a lot of information. And one of the projects this morning, I think you'll find of interest. So, Dr. George Bird. We didn't get one, we had some more outside on the table. Uh, this was a booklet on the soybean cyst nematode. And soybean cyst nematode has been around Michigan now for a while. I don't know how many times I've been in this meeting room, maybe at least five. Every time I, I come, I, I see uh, more faces that I recognize. This morning, at, at one time when I was handing these out, somebody said, there's a the guy we're going to have to see a parade because uh, we have soil tested and uh, we have some, uh, yeah. some, some nematodes. So I'm going to do two things today. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about a survey that was funded with your checkoff dollars and how that relates to you in this part of Michigan. And then secondly, I'm going to talk to you about seed treatments. And uh, all of you have been dealing with seed treatments uh, uh, with uh, insects and with uh, fungi. This is probably the first time you're going to hear about seed treatments uh, from a nematology standpoint. But I'm going to push this button here. I don't know if I have the right one or not. It, it did absolutely nothing. Okay. Uh, so what we'll do is uh, uh, we'll try this arrow here. That arrow seemed to work, but it went twice. Okay. So I'm, I'm in good shape here. No problem. I'll use that just the way it is. Uh, what, what do we have here, and is there any possibility we could get this front set of lights uh, down? These are working behind the okay. first. I got it. Okay. Good. Well, I'm glad I got that early this morning. Okay. Okay. I got another good hour left. Uh, got a sleeping room there. Okay. And what are all those little white dots on? Every one of those little white dots is a female of the soybean sesanto. And uh, when she's mature and fertilized, there'll be about 250 eggs in each of those females. 
And when she dies, her body turns into a protective cyst. And those eggs can survive in that cyst for 8, 10, or 12 years in the absence of a host or food. Now, how many of you have got one of those good sticky points in front of you when it comes to food um, already this morning? So I just wanted to show you that. And then when I put those under the microscope and blow them up a, a little bit, uh, the females look like this here on, on the root system. And so just to remind you again, the, the two take-home messages I'm going to give you uh, this morning are basically the survey and then the seed treatment. You know, and for a long, long time, I've made my living as a university professor so I can stand up here and uh, lecture to you or at you, okay? Um, you know, maybe I shouldn't have come in. <laughs> um, lecture to you or at you, uh, but anytime I say something you've got a question about, raise your hand and I'll take it. And boy, yesterday morning I got a question from over there that kind of got me going for a while where I almost had to cut myself off. You had to watch your questions an hour later he had that question answered. So you got to watch your yeah, questions. Yeah, it was a professorial answer yesterday morning. So let, let's go on. Okay. Okay. Well, we say we've got a map of Michigan here minus the uh, Upper Peninsula at the moment. And there's two things I want you to look at on this map. It's County names and dates, okay, and also sort of uh, the color. And uh, if we look here at uh, Gratiot County, right in the center of the state, the 1987 means that soybean cyst nematode was found there, the uh, first find in the state in 1987. I'll give the grower's first name at Joe's, okay. And um, 1987, at least in this part of the state, we had a big flood the fall before, 86. And uh, I was invited out, out there one morning, and I asked Joe, I said, uh, what was your losses due to this problem last year? Joe said 100%. I said 100%. Uh, how do you define that? He said, well, it kind of means I gave him tender loving care, and I didn't bother to take the combine into the field. That's not a bad definition of 100%. Second thing that I asked Joe is I said, uh, about how many years have you been raising beans continually in this field? Joe thought for a couple minutes and then he said, well, you know, about 25. <laughs> so that's another point I want to make. Crop rotation, okay, uh, can really help reduce risk to your 60 plus bushel fields. And also, once you have the problem, it can help from making it get worse. Then, second find, and the person who found it was with us yesterday, down here in Van Buren County, 1988. And I, I know how that field was infested. Uh, that grower was really a vegetable grower, and the soybeans were sort of his rotation crop. And we went out in that 40-acre field, there must have been 20 circles of the nematode. And each one of those circles, I bet you, is where they emptied out, okay, the tomato transplant box. And the nematodes came in there, I'm pretty sure, from South Georgia. So there's lots of ways nematodes can get around in addition to uh, used equipment, irrigation water flooding over from uh, your neighbors, or even wind with this particular uh, nematode. Then we got some hot spots here. Uh, Bay in Saginaw in uh, 1989. Uh, uh, and where we have these red colors, that's where we have the greatest incidence of the problem today. Okay. You can see another hot spot has always been down here uh, in Monroe County. You know, Keith, I haven't said this at any of these meetings this year, but there was a time when Monroe County was much heavier in vegetables uh, than there are today. So there might be an explanation for that, that nobody could ever prove me wrong this way, Kate. <laughs> so now let's take a look at incidents. About two years ago, we started a sleeping cyst nematode survey, a statistically valid one, where we went to Frankenmuth 
to the Michigan Soybean Promotion Committee offices, and we took the database of all 12,000 soybean growers in the state. And then we figured out what percentage of the soybean acreage each county had, and we went into that database and at random took out 10% uh, of all the growers. Okay, names. So it was done at random. And then we thought maybe we'd need a five, another 5% five because some of you might not be home when we, we got there. So we took that out as a backup. And as this survey uh, developed, we realized that we were much too ambitious and it all got cut back to 5%. So during the last two years, my laboratory okay, visited for this survey 550 different farms in Michigan. There's probably not many people in the room that have visited 550 different farms in Michigan in the past two years. And it was a, a very large job. So, said a lot, based on this survey, I'm saying that about one out of every three fields is invested. One out of every three. And I think that's probably more than when I started uh, coming up here, so uh, 10 years ago, um, uh, on, on, on soybeans. How does that compare with these uh, areas that are in red here? Well, grass at 78, we were there, I believe, Monday. Uh, uh, Saginaw, 91%. Shiawassee, 79, 81, Monroe. And so I think in this part of the state, where we start looking at things with Huron, one out of every four, and Tuscola, one out of every two, and Lapeer, two out of every three. St. Clair is a county that, I've been on farms in St. Clair County that have soybean system too, and I've worked with growers, so they are controlling it. But there's two counties uh, at the moment that sort of have the, I don't really understand why St. Clair's 18, oh, obviously, excellent agronomic pra practices, right? Okay, <laughs> in relation to that. And for some reason, Calhoun down here uh, it, it is a little bit different. So I think that the southwest part of the state here, where I've worked an awful lot, I don't think the problem's going to get much worse. I think it's sort of stabilized. But here, in the thumb in the east side, in Sanilac, in Huron, in St. Clair, and uh, at Tuscola, I think it's very, very important that we use our resistant varieties, and we use them wisely uh, to keep this problem under control where it could get a little worse. There's also another factor here, and that is some some counties that uh, have the largest amount of animal agriculture uh, seem to have gotten in until later and don't seem to have it uh, uh, quite uh, as much. <coughs> there are counties that raise soybeans where we haven't seen them. Well, I'm going to show you a couple graphs at the moment. And uh, here on the x-axis, the first line, and on the y-axis, the incidence of occurrence. And so you can see that we have more farms with the number thirds in those hot spot areas where it was found the first, and fewer farms uh, uh, with uh, the soybean cyst nematode where it was found uh, more recently. And I'm going to backtrack uh, uh, two slides here at the moment because uh, I've forgotten here when the first find was in San Juan. 1996. Okay. So we're 15 years. Okay or so into the problem uh, here. And if you look up in Huron County, uh, 2004, that was fairly recent. One more of these graphs, and that's basically the planted acreage. And so the greater the planted acreage in a county, the greater the probability that uh, a farm uh, would have soybean system. Things. Questions? Okay. Yes, sir. Will your uh, soybean cyst nematode affect corn and sugar beans? Soybean cyst nematode will not affect corn. What about sugar beans? Okay, soybean cyst nematode and sugar and beet cyst nematode are close cousins, but they are different. Okay, and we now have resistant varieties for, for beets, and uh, we've been able to greatly increase tonnage there, okay, with that. But they're, they're different, but with the those two, they're, they're close enough, so 
once in a while in a couple fields in Michigan, we found some close cousins that have made it that weren't supposed to. Okay, and so we're still looking into that. But if you go to all the scientific literature, uh, they're, they're two separate ones that won't affect the opposite. Okay, but lots of different nematodes, but I don't have time for that uh, this morning. Let's get into the seed treatments. For many, many years now, I think we've had seed treatments for uh, fungus control. And for a long time now, we've had seed treatments for insect control. But the nematode business is brand new. And it's something you're going to be hearing more about. And there are four potential seed treatments I want to talk to you about this morning. Evicta, Motiva, Pastoria, and Harpin Proteins. And I think in addition to at least having heard those names, I want you to sort of think, you know, there can be chemicals, and there can be biologicals, and the chemicals will work as pesticides, and there can be biologicals. And then there's another one I'm going to talk to you about that actually induces natural defenses in the plant. Let's look at the first one at the moment. The first one is Evicta. And it's Evicta complete corn. And Evicta has on it a, an insecticide and a bunch of fungicides, you know, lots of stuff gets stacked on that seed that you buy these days. And then the, the nematicide is Evicta. So what is it? Do you want a pig or a horse? Those are also hey, nematodes, you know, so there's a wide variety of nematodes that even goes across into uh, animal uh, agriculture. Originally, this chemical was discovered from a bacterium, a very specialized bacterium called an actinomycete. Now, all of you should know, I hope, maybe not, that actinomycetes are what give us all of our antibiotics. All of our antibiotics come from actinomycetes. And in addition to that, in the soil, actinomycetes are what give you that healthy, characteristic, earthy odor of the soil. And then the companies that developed them, they got a, a synthetic chemical basically from that uh, that they market as, uh, as uh, Evicta. Now, Evicta is registered on both corn and soybeans. It's readily available to all your seed dealers as Evicta complete corn. Uh, in 2012, it is not readily available in Michigan on soybeans, but can be gotten on soybeans by special request. Uh, it is duly labeled, okay, uh, by EPA. Uh, it's a chemical. It functions as an amatocide and basically kills uh, the, uh, uh, the, the nematode. And I've worked with it both in the field and in the greenhouse. And uh, I was a little skeptical in the uh, weather. It's just so tough. I was a little skeptical, but with this product, I've gotten some um, pretty good response. Other thing I want to say right now before uh, uh, I might forget at the end. The companies for all these seed treatments, they're not marketing them as standalones. They're putting them on the resistant varieties and not the susceptible varieties. So basically, like if you're getting a 10 bushel soybean uh, uh, yield increase with the resistant variety, then this is designed to give you another two or three on top of that. At one of our early meetings this year, uh, well, let me go on to the next one before I make this comment. The second one is the Tebow. And if I didn't say that, uh, uh, Evicta is a Syngenta product. Uh, Votivo is a Bayer product. And one of the growers at one of our early meetings said, George, well, how much extra does that cost me for a unit? And I didn't know. I said I do not know. And one of the farmers raised his hand and came to my head, aid and said, about five bucks a unit more. Okay. And uh, since then, I've checked that out with some of the seed companies. And, you know, there's a range in relation to uh, uh, the cost, but that, that's relatively correct. Votiva, Bayer, seed treatment. This is a living organism. It's a bacterium. It's Bacillus firmus. And Bacillus firmus is marketed as Pancho Votivo. Uh, it's available in Michigan this year uh, uh, on both corn and soybeans. As a matter of fact, there are some seed companies this year that have treated 
uh, of the soybean seeds that they're going to market in Michigan uh, with uh, with uh, In addition to that, uh, uh, it's registered on cotton and used widely, and I'm researching it on uh, on sugar beets. So these two pictures here, the one on the left, I grew this root system in the complete absence of all living organisms. You cannot do that in the field, any place in the world. Then, I did that again, and then I added the bacterium here. And the bacterium then protects that root, okay, uh, uh, from the nematode. We don't know the exact mechanism at the moment of this particular uh, uh, bacterium, whether it just protects it or whether the bacterium gets inside the nematode and kills it. But there's a close cousin, uh, uh, Bt, the Cellus thuringiensis, that he uses in insecticide. Uh, and uh, and um, uh, in that case, it actually makes a hole in the stomach wall of the insect, and the insect then basically dehydrates eventually and, and dies. Yes, sir? These two products you mentioned uh, is a seed treatment, kills the nematode. Uh, I'm asking, uh, kills the nematode uh, based on ingesting the soil that's been treated with this? Well, in, in the first one, basically, the nematode has to inject just the chemical, and it works just like any other pesticide. In this one, basically, the bacterium, once you put it in the soil, uh, actually reproduces. You know, bacteria undergo binary fission and reproduce very, very, very rapidly. Okay, my, I'm leading up to the punchline. Uh, can, I'm surprised you said that this um, um, nematode does not affect corn. That's right. Okay. Yes. We have a corn. We have a corn cyst nematode, uh, but in the United States, it's only known in two counties in Maryland and top of one mountain in Virginia. Yes, but there's in, in a couple different comments. They're using this cultivo um, uh, as a seed treatment for corn as well. Wow. And so my question is, can you still be killing? Uh, Soybean cyst nematode during the corn crop by having great question. Absolutely yes. Okay. Okay, you're going to get some benefit, you know, from that. There are corn nematodes that I'm not here to talk about today, like the root lesion nematode. Yes. Okay. Yeah, repeat we'll the uh, question, George. Will you? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, if you use uh, a, a a seed treatment for a corn nematode, uh, will you also be getting some benefit uh, uh, for the uh, uh, soybean cyst nematode? We don't have all the data like on that, but in some cases, yes, absolutely. What like this week earlier, we were up in Hillman, way up, way up north, and the potato growers haven't had Timic for years, okay? But they eat for potatoes, but they use Timic on their dry beans <coughs> until it just went, you know, recently, and that was to get that root lesion nematode population down. It helped them with the dry bean yields, but it helped them much more with the potato yields. I think I answered that. There's some so things the, we don't know. The control with the corn, will it be enough for the next year when you put soybeans in there? I, if I had soybeans this nematode, I wouldn't bet on that. But I, I would definitely use the resistant variety until we know a lot more. Okay. But the, the, the biocontrol agents are broad spectrum. The nematodes are, are well, that's not true. The next one is good. The first two I gave you are broad spectrum. Uh, well, the nematodes are specific. With the exception of Pastoria, and this is the third one. I've got to get finished here pretty quick. But Pastoria is another bacterium. You can see the spores of it on this uh, uh, on this nematode, and basically the spores basically then invade the nematode and decompose the entire part of the nematode and turn all that into bacterial spores. Now this one is a venture capital company, uh, by uh, Pastoria Bioscience. Uh, you could probably buy it today if you wanted to, the company. Uh, but I think it has a lot of potential. But you're going to have to use one species of this bacterium for soybean system type, and a different one for sugar beet system type, and a different one for where it's registered at the moment, the sting nematode on turf, or the cotton reniform nematode. This one is under research at the moment for us on beans and beets. I'm working on that. In fact, I was with the one from a phone with the company just yesterday. Third one, last one, Harpin proteins. And the Harpin proteins are a class of proteins that induce plant defenses. 
It's a very, very different mechanism of resistance. And what you're going to hear about during the next five years is that these are called plant health regulators. And uh, Hartman proteins have been developed uh, as inhibit or messenger. This year, you can get them from a company called Plant Health Care. They also came from a bacteria called Winnie Amalabra. And that particular bacterium is what causes fire blight, okay, of apples and pears down in southwest Michigan and up in the Lillinois Peninsula. And so basically, there's all kinds of chemical reactions here. They get into the nucleus and stimuli, stimulate the right genes to be turned on to come out and then protect the plant. We've got a lot more to be learned about that. So in conclusion this morning, oops, don't have time to do that. I went too long. But let me, let me show you real quickly some results with a susceptible variety. Uh, I got 16 bushels per acre. When I use the right resistant variety, 50 bushels per acre. When I use the wrong resistant variety, 10 bushels late. late. Okay. And with one C treatment here, uh, we were able to, and this C treatment was on the 887-88, we got another three bushels. Okay. I'm going to have to. So I think uh, the future for soybean system control with seed treatments is, is bright. Uh, we have four of them that we're working on, and two of those are, are available at the moment. But much remains to be learned. And uh, hopefully uh, uh, this uh, next picture here will uh, stimulate the Spartans to do a little bit better, okay, uh, uh, against the University of Michigan on Sunday than uh, uh, they did the other night. Marty, do I have time for one or two more questions? Yeah, question or two, yeah. Did you hear all those questions? I had some good ones over there. Yeah. Yes, sir. What's the thoughts on mixing the nematode varieties like sugar beets or soybeans with non nematode? If you mix two varieties together in a planter and just plant them? Okay. Good or bad? You're what? talking about a multi variety deal. Right. I, I have done that, and basically the theory behind it is. You can build, if you use one source of resistance for too long, the, the, the tough nematodes are going to survive. So if you have a small portion, okay, of seed out there that's susceptible, you're always going to have some whips out there. Maybe I didn't come across that one. You know. Remember, you, you've been, people have talked to you about for years that you can overuse resistance varieties, and some of the real tough guys, okay, uh, survive, and they mate with the tough gals, and then their offspring, basically, are the nematodes that can overcome that resistance. So I've had some research for years where uh, I have mixed varieties, and if I put a little susceptible, and let me, I'm not going to go into mechanism, but what I'm going to tell you is where I've used multi bars, I've always gotten the highest yields. That gives some of the seed companies heartburn when I say that. Does <laughs> so all these treatments become liquid, or can you get them dry? You will not be putting on these uh, treatments. They will come to you on the seed, okay? They will be put on by your seed dealer. Yeah. You won't have a purchase this year already. Not this year. Okay. It might be on, check it. It might be on, check it. Uh, in, I think that's all I want to say. Yes, sir. Last question. we got to get rolling. Just how long does that control last? Is it because if they're talking on the seed, does it? Kind of. Well, better to, uh, the, the seed treatment is not going to last more than one year. Okay. It's going to lower the whole right through till harvest? Or does it oh, yeah. It, it's the initial. You, the nematodes that escape are going to build up. But it's the resistant varieties that are going to get your population very, very low. And I've got the population low enough in a couple of research trials so I could come back for one year with a susceptible. But then the population will take. I'll, take, I'll be here during the break and take questions. Martin, why don't you go on out there? We'll, uh